Welcome to Foxhall Heath, the home of Ipswich Speedway and it's Derby action tonight with an elite league fixture against Kings Lynn Knights. Ipswich, who lost by just four points up at Kings Lynn, will want to win this one tonight, not only just for the Derby the fact that it's a Derby match, but also the fact that Ipswich are currently top of the league and five points clear. Tony Ricardson, world champion, is going to lead the Kings Lynn challenge, but Ipswich, they'll want to win this one. Oh, well, they most certainly will. We'll start with taking a look at the Kings in AMG Fiat Robinson's Knights. And at number one, it is Tony Carson, the world champion, former Ipswich rider, of course. At number two, operating rider replacement for the injured Robbie Keswick. Number three, Stefan Anderson. He's been beset by injury problems this year. So is Bo Brahel. At number four, testimonial man next season. At number five, it is Lee Adams. Having a great season this year at number six. It is Travis McGowan, the young Australian who started to score well for the Knights. Scored seven points last night in a 54-36 victory over Bellevue. We're near the top of the league table. Of course, did it switch some favours there. And at number seven, it is Tom P. Madsen. Over to the Evening Star Woodward switches. And at number one, as always, it is Chris Louie. Hip switch. They've not had a, a match since their 51-39 victory over Wolverhampton here last Thursday. At number two, it is Savalas Kailtin. So, well, he didn't have a good meeting at all here last week. He haven't scored at maximum the previous match against Eastbourne. So, we'll be able to get back to big scores at number three. Just saw Tony Swab. At number four, it is Thomas Gollub. At number four, it is Thomas Topinka. Rather, at number five, that is Thomas Gollub, of course. Certainly can't mistake him. And I think the season's catching up with him. All this flying round here, there, and everywhere all over Europe. At number six, it is Brett Woodyfield, the Australian who's made a good impression this year at Vauxhall Heath. And at number seven, it is young Gary Corbett. He comes in a reserve guest for the injured Jason Bunyan. So the riders coming out in for heat number one of this local derby. Promised to be a cracking meeting. Ipswich v Kings Lynn. And before the meeting, we had a few words with three of the riders. This is what they said to Mike. I've got the Ipswichers, Tony Svab. Tony, it's Kings Lynn tonight. It's a derby match. It should be good. Yeah, that's right. We definitely uh, we got beat, as everybody probably know, last last time at Kingston. A bit unfortunately, we, we, they were without Tony, so they weren't as strong as that today. So yeah, I mean, we we looking definitely for revenge, and uh, we want to hammer them today. And uh, well, it's not going to be as easy as it was at Kingston. Definitely, I don't think because they have Tony, and I think they they will go for it. They give us a hard time, but I'm sure we can beat them. And of course. As the league's panning out, we're actually top of the league and five points clear. I mean, we've got a real chance of winning this league, haven't we? Yeah, that's right. But I mean, there's still still few meetings to go, and there's uh, there are different clubs, which which would we'll probably take on the tile as well. But I mean, as long as we're winning, uh, we are in a good good chance. But we can't afford to lose any meeting like we did at Kings Lane, for example. You know, which that would put us in a strong position. But I mean, with with three meetings lost, that's still not bad. We are in a good chance. And of course, Tony Ricardson has got a workshop with you out at Old Newton. I mean, do you compare notes very often? Do we compare, sorry? Compare notes or mechanics or how it goes? Uh, yeah, I try to go. Uh, probably Tony's not as my workshop as much as I'm in his, definitely not. <laughs> but uh, I'd, I'd like to go to this workshop, especially to see Carl and uh, looking for some advice. He's, he's been helping me quite a lot this year as well with the bits and pits. So it was, it's, it's quite good, you know. I mean, uh, Tony probably hasn't got anything to learn from me, to be honest. So I'm more in his workshop. But I mean, your form has been superb this year, Fripps. You must be pleased. What was it five-point average up to seven and a half? I mean, that's a great performance. It's actually over eight now. Sorry, it's over eight now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's been uh, good. I mean, I said before the season started, I would be happy with seven. And as long as I can keep it above seven, then I'm happy. Obviously, now when I'm above eight, I want to keep it above eight. And uh, definitely, I would like to, to still improve on that a little bit till end of the season, maybe and a half if I can. But uh, I feel that till now, you know, that the season's almost finishing, it's getting harder and harder. I think I can feel myself, you get a bit worn out as well. And uh, it's definitely going to be, it's, it has been a good season for me so far. And uh, if we could win the, the league this year, it would be fantastic. Very finally, you're an Ipswich asset now, signed and owned by Ipswich Speedway. Are you pleased about that? Oh, definitely. I mean, uh, I don't like to be just in the middle. I, and be no ones, but uh, this this is definitely I mean middle, but it closed down. I don't hide that. That's been my favourite track for for a year, and uh, I really loved it. It took me a while to learn the Ipswich track, but I like to think that I mean this this year I'm much on the track, and uh, I can even come from the back, which is is not as easy. And uh, I'm starting winning a race quite comfortably here. So yeah, I'm looking forward to. Hopefully, I can uh, stay here for a few years now.
Lovely. Thanks, Tony. Good luck tonight. All right. Thanks. I got to meet Kings, Lins, Bo, Brill. Bo, it's Ipswich tonight, and they're always tough. Always tough is, you know, the local derby, and uh, I think uh, we, both teams is uh, good, and uh, I think we had good results in the past here, so we're looking forward, and I think it will be a good match. You've had some good meetings here at Ipswich in the past, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, going back to Kings Lynn, of course, you lost your friend Thomas to Pinker from Kings Lynn. I mean, do you still see much of him? Uh, no, really, because... Uh, we are, all, uh, we are quite busy, you know, here, uh, Tom rising in Sweden as well, and Poland, and uh, i got some uh, meetings, open meetings on continent, and also the Polish league, so it's quite busy, you know, so we don't see much each other. And finally tonight here, any predictions? I hope that we win, you know, I think we have a good chance to win, but... Um, I think Ipswich going very well in the in, uh, last couple of meetings, so it will be a hard meeting, but I hope that it will be good for us. Lovely, thanks very much, Bo. Good luck. Thank you. I've got me Kings in Tony Ricards, and Tony, it's nice to have you back at Fox Hall. You're looking forward to it. Yeah, sure, nice to be back too. It's, uh, the track, track looks really good, and it's always nice to come here. And your season at Kings Lynn has been a bit up and down, has it? Well, you know, I think we've been doing pretty good off the circumstances. And on to the Grand Prix very quickly because you really are back in it now. I mean, a, a great, great Grand Prix in England. You must have been thrilled with that. Yeah, it's been going uh, good. I've been making the A final ever since my first exclusion in Prague. So I'm, I'm pretty happy like things are going, but I'm still a long way from it. And, uh, but you never know, it's two rounds to go and I have everything to win, nothing to lose. So I'm going to go for it. I mean, particularly Voyons, I mean, one of your favourite tracks perhaps? No, I, I don't. You know, obviously I never had a good uh, GP at, uh, at England, England before, but now I had good one, one good there and hopefully I can have a good one in, uh, in Birgos, the next one. So I only see it, only one meeting ahead all the time. And finally, back to tonight's match. I mean, obviously it's Derby action. It's always very exciting. I mean, how do you see it going? I don't know. I mean, Ipswich has been uh, doing extremely well this year, I think. And, um, you know, the, if King Slim wouldn't win the league, I, I hope that Ipswich will do it, you know. and. Uh, Obviously, uh, it's going to be very tough to beat them here, but uh, we're going to give them a, our best shot. Lovely. Good luck, Tony, and thanks. All right. Thank you. Oh, great to hear from Tony there, as, also, as well as Boba Hale, of course, and also Tony Swab, so the riders. Well, they are out for heat number one, and this race, when it sees Chris Lewis coming out off gate number one, Tony Ricardson, the world champion off gate number two, off gate number three, we've got... Savalas clouting him from the outside. It is rider replacement, Boba Hale for Robbie Kessler. Kings, as we said, well, they had a 54-36 victory last night over Bellevue, who are currently second in the Elite League. Tonight, they're against the league leaders. How will they go? Last night, Tony Lee scored a fantastic paid maximum. 14-1, Lee Adams, we just missed out on one. Just dropping a single point. Boba Hale scored paid 11, so they're in good form. Were the Knights last night? It's Richard need to be on top form here to see if they're going to win as heat number one gets underway and when Ricardson has made a very fast start and so is Boba Hale they're in first and second but Chris Lewis comes through in the second place Savalas Clouting, he's at the back but Bruhel it is who's in third spot with Tony Ricardson leading the way it's a 4-2 for the visitors in heat number one as Savalas Clouting, when he's chasing after Bruhel as they go down the back straight for the second time Tony Ricardson it is who leads his former teammate Chris Lewis in second place, Brahel still in third, but look, he's looking down at his machine as they come around to start the third lap. Still, Tony leads the way, the track record holder here, of course, at the Fox or Heath circuit, and he's going very fast in this one. He's already got the track record at Kings in this season. He's lowered that as Brahel hit problems there. He looked up, and Savalas Clouton has come through in a third place. It was a 4 2 4 the visitors, but now it's a thrill as Tony comes around to win heat number one in what looks to be a very fast time, he pulls the wheelie as well, crossing the line, second place goes to Louis, first spot to Savalas Clouting, and Tony will in fact, he's winning time, 58.3 seconds, and that's just one tenth of a second outside his track record he set last July, the Kingsland fans in the crowd, they'll be delighted with the form he's showing here this evening early on, and if perhaps he hadn't pulled that wheelie, he would have equaled or low the track record here, Rico absolutely flying. 
On to race number two in this, the reserves heat. And it sees Travis McGowan coming out of gate number one, of gate number two. We've got Brett Woodyfield off gate number three. It is Tom P. Madsen guesting for Kings in once again. Rides of course for Berwick in the Premier League. Scored pay five last night from the outside. It is Gary Corbett, the young arena Essex rider, who's done very well in the Premier League in his first season and he's not done too bad here, although when he's lost out of third places, Brett Woodyfield leads from McGowan in second place. The tour straight is in first and second. The Dane in third and the young English rider when he's at the back. A thrill though it is at the moment in heat number two as Woodyfield leads the way then from McGowan in second place. And uh, Madsen where he's holding on to at third spot ahead of Gary Corbett. A couple of laps gone and Gary well this is his first outing in the elite league. Certainly shows the progress that he has made as Woodyfield where he's coming under some pressure there from Travis as the final lap flag is being shown. A race developing between the two Aussies now as Brett Willey still out in front. McGowan in second place with Madsen back in third. It looks like it's going to be a second consecutive three all. Oh, Ro McGowan, well, he's going very wide indeed. And Tom Madsen, he comes through in a second place. Travis McGowan gets a place, a point in third. 60.8, that was Brett's winning time. And well, he often wins heat number two. And the crowd applauding him. The good sized crowd here, as you'd expect for this local derby. Between these two sides, Ipswich with a one by eight points in the Craven Shield on Good Friday when we had a huge crowd here for that meeting. And Brett, when he wins heat number two, which keeps the sides level after a couple of heats. On to heat number three then, and at this one when it sees Thomas Topinka coming out for his first ride. He's off gate number one against his former team, of course. Off gate number two, we've got Stefan Anderson. And uh, he's had a groin injury of late, but he came back from it successfully last night. Off gate number three, it is Tony Sparman from the outside. But overhaul, well, of course, he's taking his second out in. Having momentarily been in second place in heat number one, he eventually finished last, having pulled a big locker on the top turn. And Savalas Fountain came through in the third place. Kings in a causeway. Scored a magnificent victory over Ipswich by three points in a corresponding fixture at the North of the Arena. Heat number three gets underway. And Bahel this time has made a very fast start from the outside and he leads. Bello checks Tony Svab and Thomas the Pinker in second and third with the Swede Stefan Anderson. He's at the back, but it is Brahel who leads the way then from Svab in second place. Having a look behind him, see his teammate to Pinker behind him and Stefan Anderson. Well, he's still at the back, a couple of laps gone as Tony Svab will he indicates to Thomas to stay on that inside line. They're keeping Anderson at bay at the moment as Brahel, but he still leads the way then. Tony, as he was saying in his interview with us, he's up to his average total of eight points per match in the last couple of weeks. Recently been bought, of course, by the Ipswich management, Thomas Gollum and Chris Louis, where there's only two ten hundredths of a point between them and the averages. Thomas 9.43, Chris 9.41, as, as Tony Farb, he has to settle for second place, his Czech countryman, Bobrahel wins heat number three in a time of 59.9 seconds, a sub 60 second time in four for him all, third place to Thomas, our third consecutive shared heat, promises to go all the way down to the wire, and we started off with three shared heats. And well there he is, back in the pits. After that victory, being congratulated there by Tony. Stefan Anderson, in fact that was of course, obviously not congratulating him, having finished last and he looks as if he's in some pain. And well there is Thomas Topinka in the Ipswich side of the pits, just working hard on his machines there again in a couple of races time. Now it's Mike 
Tiny, the team manager, looking a bit concerned. As Tony Swab, well, he's working hard as well on his bike. Of course, the supporters, they don't see all what goes on in the pits. As the riders, they come out for heat number four. Then Ipswich on nine points, Kings in on nine. And at this race, well, it sees Gary Corbett coming out off gate number one. Didn't score in his first ride. Off gate number two, it is Tom Madsen. He scored a couple of points off gate three. The first ride for... Thomas Gorham from the outside, first for Lee Adams, two Grand Prix stars in this one. Heat number four gets underway, and Gorham it is who's made the best start, and he leads away from Lee Adams in second place with Gary Corbett. But he's doing well, he's back in third, ahead of Madsen. So it is a heat advantage for the home side then, and the deadlock could be broken as Thomas leads away, and pulling ahead of Adams in second place. Lee, of course, who finished sixth, in the British Grand Prix a couple of weeks ago. Thomas had a bit of a nightmare meeting. Finishing last in the Constellation final. I mean, pulled out when he saw what he thought were red lights come on. There were in fact orange lights from the stock car track. As he leads the way with a lap to go. In fact, Lee Adams, where he's closing in on the Grand Prix leader. And Thomas, where he's definitely slowing, in fact, as they go down into that back straight for the final time. Is Thomas going to be able to hold on when it doesn't look like it? Is it problems there? And Lee Adams wins the race as Thomas really limps across the line in second place. Third spot goes to Gary Corbett. He'll be pleased with his third spot. Thomas Gollop most certainly will not. Lee Adams will he is. So is the Kings in supporters in the crowd. One minute exactly that was Lee's winning time. And well, it did look as if it switched. We're going to move into a two point lead, but it was not to be. Our fourth shared heat in a row. Ipswich were desperate to win here this evening and collect the bonus point to keep their total chances alive. Not doing well in that one. Now we're some of the crowd down the back straight. The crowds were certainly held up very well this season, as one would expect with Ipswich leading the Elite League. Heat number five, the Evening Star Woodward Woodward switches on 12. Kings in A and D at Robinson's Knights on 12 points as well. Heat number four. Peak number five, sorry, sees Tom Madsen coming out for two on the trots. Right replacement out in Grimm off gate two, Tony Swab. Off gate three it is Tony Ricardson from the outside, Thomas Topinka. As the heat gets underway and Tony with his shot from the start. Ricardson that is of course. He leads away from Topinka in second place. Tony Swab in third, Madsen at the back. So are we heading towards our fifth straight shared heat? as Rico leads and well, he's looking in excellent form here this evening currently second in fact in the elite league averages he has led it for a while but second now to Jason Crump it looks like he's going between those two riders for the top honour this year in the averages as they come round to start the final lap then, and Ricardson it is, who's way, way out in front, ahead of Topinka and Swab, Madsen at the back, so another shared heat, it's going to be in heat number five, and there's still going to be nothing between the two sides, as Rico wins it, by a country mile, two points to for Topinka, Swab gets a point in third, 58.8, another very quick time for Tony, and uh, plenty of support for him, as you would suspect, still a very popular rider in the Ipswich area. Pushed out by the average of the course at the start of the season, but done very well for Kings Lynn. And the winner of the heat number five, still the sides are level. On to heat number six then, and this one, when it sees Silas Clouding coming out of gate number one. Paid second in his first ride off gate two. We've got Lee Adams, race winner of course when Thomas had his problems. Off gate number three is Chris Louie and from the outside Travis McGowan. So perhaps heat number six will see the deadlock broken. As the riders settle down at the start line then, 
Referee released the tapes for Frank Evelyn here this evening and in fact Chris Lewis has made a good gate and so Sedaris Clareton as McGowan where he goes out very wide indeed touches the safety fence but does not displace the panel otherwise the race will be stopped here comes Lee Adams on the inside of Clareton as he moves through in a second place he has indeed Chris Lewis it is though who leads the way from Lee Adams now in second place Sedaris Clareton is in third and McGowan where he's a long distance behind in this one so it looks perhaps as if Ipswich could move into a two point lead after six races it just promised to be a very tight match here this evening very evenly balanced Kings in where they're not doing as well as Ipswich obviously in the league but they are mid table and we're certainly a very respectable position for them considering the injury problems they've had this year and of course the retirement of Martin Dixon who found the elite league just a bit too tough for him as Chris Louie wins heat number six then second place goes to Adams third spot to Clareton so we do have a team moving into the front into the lead and it is it switched by a couple of points 60.5 that was Chris's winning time and well we'll take another look and see how Lee Adams came through into second place getting the better there of Sir Arles Clareton that was how the position stayed, a 4-2 though for Ipswich. And in the Ipswich side of the pits there comes the race winner, Chris Louie, his first victory of the night. Did very well of course for England in the World Team Cup semi-final at the weekend where they saw the threat of Denmark down at Paul Chris where he scored 15 and 3 bonus points a paid maximum leading his country a brilliant performance by him on that occasion so Alice Curtin is having a few words with Chris about that race and well Lee Adams a second place for him he started off pretty well 5 points from his first 2 rides but his side where they have dropped a couple of points behind as the riders where they come out then for heat number seven here's switch on 19 points kings in on 17 what's this one got in store for us it sees Stephen Anderson coming out off gate number one no points in his first ride off gate two it is Thomas Golub problems of course in his first outing off gate number three it is Bo Brahel from the outside. Brett Woodyfield, heat seven is underway. Thomas Willey's made a good start and he's forced Brahel out very wide indeed. But Stephen Anderson is attempting to come through the inside. But Thomas, with a brilliant first and second, Ben Byron, he saw off the challenge of Bo Brahel, sent him wide and was also had enough speed to get past Stephen Anderson. Brett Woodyfield, well, he's at the back, so a three all perhaps in this one. Back to them, of course, as Thomas Gollard leads away. From Stefan Anderson, a better ride by him in second place. Had some good meetings here in the past with Stefan. And when he's chasing Thomas Gold, meanwhile Brett Willyfield, where he's also trying to close in on Himmelbrahel, who won his last ride. But with a lap to go, it is Gollum who's at where he's out in front. And a Stefan Anderson, two races going on within heat number seven. Brett Willyfield, where he's still trying to come past Bo Brahel, but I don't think he's going to be able to do it. Thomas Gollum where he's going to get the victory second place goes to Anderson and Brahel really does hold on to third place ahead of Brett 60.9 that was Thomas's winning time his first win of the night no mechanical problems for him in that one but it is a return to the shared heat so Ipswich they still maintain their two point lead On to race number eight then, 22 points to Ipswich, 20 points to Kings Lynn. And well, we've got some changes in this one with Tompy Madsen, he comes out of gate number one, taking his ride off gate number two. We've got Brett Woodyfield replacing Gary Corbett, reserve switch. Off gate number three, we've got Travis McGowan, rider replacement out in for Robbie Kessler. From the outside, Savalas Clouting, as the race gets underway, Selwood, he's got a bit of lift. 
but he's also managed to get to the front. He leads away from Woody Field in second place. It's tied as they go into that third turn. And Woody Field with Kenny Moose through in two second place. No, he cannot. Madsen's there at the moment. Brett back in third. And Travis McGowan, well, he finds himself at the back. But it is a 4-2 for the Witches once again then. They could double the lead to four points after eight races of Savalas Pelton. Well, he said he had a bad meeting here last week, having scored his maiden maximum a couple of weeks previously against, or a week previously against Eastbourne. He failed to score here from three rides against Wolverhampton last Thursday, but doing better here this evening, and he's heading towards a victory in heat number eight. He leads the way, Madsen in second place, Woody Field in third. Ipswich, they could be doubling their lead, we said, to four points. As Savalas, when he comes round to take the chequered flag, he wins his first race of the night, two points, goes to Madsen, a good ride by him, and Woody Field will he hold off, held off the close attention of Travis McGowan for a point in third, 61.3 the winning time, the crowd down the back straight, they'll be delighted for Sale in that one, as Ipswich will they move into a four point lead, after eight races, but still, of course obviously you can go either way this meeting, very close indeed, but Ipswich, Carving out a four point lead following that 4 2 in heat eight. So on to race number nine then. Ipswich on 26, Kingsley on 22. And this race where it sees Lee Adams coming out of gate number one, off gate two, we've got Thomas Topinka off gate three. It is Travis McGowan from the outside, Tony Sparb. Heat nine gets underway, and Adams from the inside has made a good start, and he's forcing Sparb out wide. Thomas has come through in a third place with McGowan having his second ride in a row. He's at the back, but it is Lee Adams who's leading his second outing. Normally rides this track well, and he's out in front in heat number nine from Tony Sparrow in second place. Not getting out of the gate this evening is Tony, nor is Thomas the Pinker who's back in third. Travis McGowan at the back, a couple of laps to go, and again it looks like it'll be in a shared heat unless. Barb can find a way past Adams, a tall order as Lee is out in front of the World Under 21 champion. is leading the way, having a better Grand Prix series this year. Of course, he's always, always done very well in the Grand Prix Challenge. We're going to avoid that meeting at the beginning of October as he wins heat number nine. Second place goes to Sparb, third spot to Topinka, 60.3. That was Lee's winning time. And our seventh shared heat in the opening nine races. The win goes to Lee Adams' his second victory of the night. And at Kings Inn, where they've provided five of the first nine race winners. Lee Adams winning his second race in heat number nine. And uh, well there is the Aussie back in the pits, being congratulated by Tony. Now uh, at this stage Ipswich lead by point overall on aggregate for the bonus point. Carl Bloomfair of course who is in Tony Ricardson's corner and a few words there with Travis McGowan. Be disappointed with that last place. Oh well, it's it will work for Tony. Oh well, thumbs down from him. Not too happy. Hasn't had a race win so far this evening. Page six. And Thomas the Pink Cup. Well, looking a bit concerned as well. Checking his tyre. New regulations, of course, have been brought in mid-season. The tyres are supplied at the track to stop any cheating that may have been going on beforehand before the new ruling come out on to heat number 10 then. This one when it sees Bo Brahel coming out off gate number one, off gate two, we've got Savalas Clouting race winner a couple of right heats ago. Off gate three, we've got Stefan Anderson from the outside. Chris Louie had a victory in his last ride. And of course still everything to race for for both teams. Savalas Clouting just pulling their goggles out trying to demiss them. 
Start Marshal John Fitch bringing the riders up to line. Heat number 10 then is about to get underway. Frank Hebton releases the tapes and Ella will start with in fact it looks like Stefan Anderson off a of three has made a fast gate. He has indeed. He forces Chris Louis out very wide indeed. Both hairs come through in the second place. Louis in third. And Soralis Pelton is at the back. So Kings in. Well, they could be scoring a 5-1 in heat number 10, which would level the scores up. But surprisingly, Chris Louis is only back in third place. He had a last in heat number 10 here last week when he scored 11 points from his other four rides. But he's back in third position as... Stefan Anderson, when he nipped out of the start, and he leads away his teammate, Bo Brown, in second place. Step, Chris Louis in third, so Alice Kelton. He looks like he's going to fail to score for the first time this evening in what will be his last race as they come round to start the final lap then. And it is still Stefan Anderson who leads the way. No side has had a 5-1 so far this evening, but it looks like he's going to go to the visitors as Ando, when he comes round to win the race, much to the delight of the Kings Inn fans who congregated down the back straight, second place goes to Bobrael, third spot only to Chris Louie, that's a big surprise, 60.9, that was the Swedes winning time, and well we certainly have got a match on our hands here this evening, the sides are level after 10 races, could still go either way, and what a reception Ando's getting from the crowd down the back straight, very popular rider up at Cerebro Road, in the north of the arena of course as he's been renamed, and showing why in heat 10. So the riders out then for heat number 11, 30 points apiece. And this one when it brings out Thomas Gollop off gate number one, off gate number two, we got Travis McGowan, rider replacement out in for him. So it runs three last since his opening race where he scored a paid second off gate number three it is Gary Corbett coming out to replace Brett Woodyfield and from the outside it is Tony Ricardson who started off fantastically well with two race victories so the two big guns of two riders top of the Grand Prix standings come together in heat number 11 who's going to get the two they can't start with Brett Woodyfield he's off Gary Corbett but he's an engine player on the line but it is Tony Ricardo who leads there, going down the back straight from Thomas Gold in second place. And with Travis McGowan, well he can go around unhindered in third because Corbett is on the centre green. It looks as if Kings then are going to move into a two-point lead with four races remaining. Are they going to score a victory here this evening? It certainly put pay to any hopes in which had of winning the Elite League title this season. A couple of laps gone and Ricardson it is who leads Thomas Gold in second place. So a psychological boost this for Rico as he's out in front from Gollub in second place. These two are going to meet a couple more times this evening in heat 13 and 15, no doubt. And Tony Ricardson is who's leading in heat number 11. He's looking unbeatable here tonight as he comes around to make it three wins out of three. Second place is going to go to Thomas and third spot to Travis McGowan, which means that Kings then move into the lead for the first time this evening by a couple of points. 59.6, another very quick time for Tony. The crowd down the back straight. The, the Kings in supporters, well, they're delighted as you would suspect. Tony getting a win over Thomas Gollum in heat number 11. Ipswich, where it's going to be back to the wall stuff now. They're two points down, four races remaining. Kings then coming on strong. So the riders out for heat number 12 then of what's been a pulsating contest here this evening. We haven't seen too much passing but the scoring, well it's more than made up for that being such a tight meeting. Heat number 12 then and this one when it sees Tony Spark coming out off gate number one. He'll be looking for a victory in this one. Off gate number two, Tom Madsen, he replaces Travis McGowan. Off gate number three, we've got Brett Woodyfield replacing Gary Corbett as we suspect him from the outside. Stefan Anderson who won his last race, he comes out in the white helmet colour off gate number four. So Ipswich trailing by two points. What can Tony and Brett do in this one? As heat number 12 gets underway, 
and Tony Scarborough has made a good start, so Stefan Anderson, but Tony Willie's pushed Stefan out very wide indeed, and Brett Willie Phil Rizzi come through in the second place, indeed he has Stefan Anderson in third, with Madsen at the back, so it's good news for him, since they could be moving back into a two point lead after 12 races, as Tony Sparb leads away from Woody Field in second spot. And Stefan Anderson, well he's only back in third place with Travis McGreed, Tom Madsen at the back. But Stefan Anderson, well he's attempting to find a way past Brett Woody Field. And now switching back brilliantly on the inside as Brett just went up his line. And he's come through into third place. So it looks like he's going to be a 4 2 only for Ipswich. They were on a 5 1. But Stefan Anderson, we haven't been passed. He has retaken second place as Tony Swarbrick is going to get his first victory of the evening. A timely one for him as well. Second place goes to Ando. Third spot to Woody Field. A 4-2 nonetheless for him. So they level things up with three races remaining. 61.2, that was Tony's winning time. And well, we'll take another look and see how Stefan Anderson came through into second place and we're chasing hard after Brett Woodyfield had a magnificent first and second bend to find a way past on the first lap but Ando really fought back very manfully indeed came coming through into second place a 4-2 for it so they level things up and Tony coming round after that first victory of the evening Back to the pits for him. And well there he is after that win. Couldn't have come at a better time. It's about time I win some races. And well indeed it is Tony. Smiley character of course. Brett really feel an important point in third for him. And in the things inside of the pits there is Stephen Anderson doing well to come through in the second place who knows how vital that will be in the final reckoning heat number 13 and this is going to be a big race between four Grand Prix riders Lee Adams off gate number will he be coming out in yellow and black in white we just saw Tony Ricardson who beat Thomas Gollum in heat number 11 Thomas of dust in his clutch as you can see at the last minute there on the stock car track waiting to come out for heat number 13 a big big race coming up and Chris Louis when he comes out off in the red helmet colour, JL in the background looking worried. The size of level, Kings in still lead by three points on Edward for the bonus point. And vital in these last three races, especially for Ipswich if they wish to retain their elite league title that they won so magnificently well last season. As Thomas, well, he gets pushed off. And the riders, well, they are at the start line in for heat number 13. And for the riding order, we've got Tony Ricardson coming out off gate number one. Off gate number two, it is Chris Louie. Off gate number three, Lee Adams. And from the outside, Thomas Gollum. And well, this heat, of course, it would grace any... Grand Prix race. Chris who finished second to Tony in the British Grand Prix. Lee who finished in sixth place in that GP and Thomas Gollum the current leader in the Grand Prix standings. World number three. Tony of course world number one. World champion last year and Chris world number five. As the riders well understandably perhaps taking their time Coming up to the start line, heat number 13, a big, big race coming up, is about to get underway, and well in fact, no it's not because Chris Louis has touched the tapes, and well I can't remember the last time that's, that Chris has done that, the red exclusion light has come on, and well they've got the choice, Mike Smiley may bring Chris out for a 15 yard handicap, and indeed that is what he has done. Chris starting 15 yards back from the other three riders. So a revised lineup then. Tony Ricardson off gate number one. 
Thomas Godfrey moves across to gate number two, off gate number three, it is Lee Adams, he stays in his position, so it's just the Ipswich pair that change around, Chris Louise off the outside, but he's 15 yards back, Mike Smiley really could have pulled out either Brett Whittyfield or Gary Corbett from the start line, but he's chosen to go with Chris from that handicap, heat number 13, a big race gets underway, Tony Ricardson unbeaten so far, but Thomas Gollum has made the start, and well, he leads away from Ricardson in second place, Adams in third, and Chris Louie, well, obviously he's at the back at the moment, but trying to close in on the Adams, and he's certainly not 15 yards back now at the end of the first lap, Thomas Gollum though it is who leads the way, Tony Ricardson who beat him in heat number 11, and has had three fast race wins so far, he's only back in second place, and he's not really gaining ground on Thomas at all, Lee Adams in third and Chris Lee Reeves at the back so whatever changes Thomas made in heat number or between heat 11 and 13 have certainly done the trick because he leads the world champion in second place, Lee Adams in third and Chris Lee well, I don't think he's going to be able to overcome that handicap certainly going to be very difficult indeed for him and he's going to not score any points but Thomas Gollard most certainly is a, an important victory for him he wins the race, two points goes to Ricardson defeated for the first time this evening third place to Lee Adams the crowd, the vast majority of them there applauding in the dark warrior as Thomas Gollard gets the victory in a time of 60 seconds exactly and we'll listen to the applause for him a big big race win that for Thomas and with two races remaining, there's still nothing between the two teams. We're going to have a last heat decide on whatever happens. Which way is it going to go? So heat number 14 then. And well, what's this one got in store for us? Again, another very big race indeed. And this one where it sees Brett Woodyfield taking his program right off gate number one. Off gate number two it is Bobrahel, he's had a race win and a paid win this evening, he's having a good meeting. Off gate number three, we've got Thomas the Pinker, I think our cameraman's almost fallen off his perch. And from the outside it is Tom Madsen who's scored four points so far, he'll be pleased with his performance from his five rides, the Berwick rider. And well that's the line up then, heat number 14 on either side going to have a, an advantage going into what proves to be another cracking final race Topinka well he's not had a race win so far so he'll be hoping to get one in this one his best chance is heat number 14 but it is Bobrahel who leads away his former teammate but he's drifted out wide and Thomas as he comes through to first place he has indeed so it is a, and with Brett Woodyfield in third it's a 4-2 for Ipswich, they could be taking a two-point lead going into the final race. But he'll be, he'll be kicking himself for going out too wide on that second bend, which allowed his good friend Thomas DePinga through in the first place. Woody Field is in third. Tom Madsen, well, he's at the back. So it looks as if the evening star Woodward switches could be moving into a two-point lead once again. They haven't held the lead, in fact, since heat number nine, when they were four points up as they come round to start the final lap then into Pinker or is it going to be a timely win for him as Brett Woodyfield is coming under some pressure from Madsen they're going down the back straight for the last time to Pinker is going to get the victory second place is going to go to Bobrahel can Woodyfield hold on the third spot as Tom Madsen he tries the last step of the around the outside but Brett Woody just holds on to that third place a 4-2 for the home side and the Ipswich fans are delighted 61.7 that was Thomas's winning time he's fitted in very well since he came into the side at the expense of Ben Howe of course and well, he's got one over his former teammates in heat 14 he wins the race and we'll take another look and see how he came through into first place out of the start it was Bobrahel who's definitely leading the way but then here comes Thomas as Bell went out too wide and Topinka comes through in the first place Brett Woodfield hold, held on the third spot a heat advantage for Ipswich how important will that be? and we've been cheered all the way back to the pits and no wonder and well, there is Thomas back in the pits following that excellent race win and we'll be pleased with that that was all Brett Woodyfield that was a big point for him 
in third place. And we're just being congratulated there. And for Bobra Hill, we'll be a bit disappointed. And well now let's go and have a few words with the rider who's been voted man of the match, Thomas Topinka. I got me Thomas Topinka. Thomas has been a good night for you so far. Yeah, wasn't wasn't too bad, was he? And start off well, you won the toss. Yeah, well we need it. We didn't want a toss for I don't know. All the time I'm in Ipswich, we didn't want a toss, so at least we've done it once. And that Heat 14, that was an important race, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I try, you know, I want to win it, and I did, so that, that was good. And of course, Kingsley and Ipswich have been the Kings in Ryder. I mean, what situation, how do you feel about, about it now? Uh, well, like I said, you know, I'm like, obviously I was, I was happy to ride in Kingsley, but they didn't want me, so Ipswich wants me, and they are happy I'm, I'm here, and... So I, I'm, I'm happy here too, so, you know, so... Can, can Thomas Gollop nip out in the last race and win it? I hope so, I hope so. Thanks, Tom. Okay, thank you. Well, good to hear from Thomas then, and well, indeed, can Thomas Gollop nip out in the final race? Tony Spar, when he comes out in red, Chris Lee, he's not scored enough points to come out in this final heat. Lee Adams, he most certainly has, he comes out in yellow and black. So does Tony Ricardson. Two big guns coming out, four kings in, then Thomas Golliver, he's done it in heat number 13. Can he do it in race number 15? We're soon going to find out. The riders are at the start line then for what promises to be an exciting final race. Ipswich on 43, kings in on 41. And the lineup, Tony Ricardson, he's off gate number one. Off gate number two, it is Tony Swab, a good raceman in his last out, and he's got paid nine so far. Off gate number three, it is Lee Adams. He's had a couple of race victories, including one over Thomas, of course, when he had mechanical problems at the end of heat number four. And from the outside, it is Thomas Gollop. And Ipswich, where he needs to win by... But a 4-2 here to collect the bonus point. I think they'll be happy with the race. With just a thrill to get the win on the night. The bonus point, where it certainly would be a big bonus. Kings in, of course, with a three, we'll give them a bonus point, a four, two, we'll give them a draw, a five, one, we'll give them all three points, the final race is underway. Oh, what's been an enthralling contest, and Thomas got about in the start when he leaves once more. Tony Ricardson, they go down the back straight, with Lee Adams in third, and Tony Swell, but he's at the back, but it is Gollum, who's out in front, six laps across the final race, and it looks as if the Dark Warrior may be giving Ipswich the two points here in the scenery, it looks as if Kings in may collect the bonus point, as Tony Ricardson and Lee, Rich and Lee Adams were there in second and third, Tony Swab at the back. So Tony Ricardson, who started off with three very good victories indeed, he got the win over. Thomas Gollum in heat number 11, and it looks as if he was in unbeatable form, but he's been caught, he was beaten by Thomas in heat number 13, and it looks like he's going to be defeated by him again in this final race, as they go down the back straight for the fourth time then coming round to a couple of laps ago and Thomas Golliver is who leads the way all the Ipswich fans are praying that he can keep going for another couple of laps because he had that machinery problems in his first ride but he doesn't look like he's having any sort of problems in this one he's pulling away from the world champion Tony Ricardo looks like in their personal duel it's going to be 2-1 to Golliver a lap to go and it is the Ipswich number five who leads from the Kings in number one Lee Adams in third Tony Swab still at the back the riders a bit spaced out it looks as if Ipswich are going to win here tonight by two points as Thomas wins the final race from Ricardson in second place. Lee Adams gets a point in third. Tony Swab at the back. The Ipswich fans are delighted. This local derby, we have seen some excellent speedway racing. Not too much overtaking, but well, it, it's certainly been close racing and very, very tight score. More than four, four points between the side. Kings here, of course, were led by a couple after heat number 11, but Ipswich have come back and have just sneaked it in the final race with a thrill. Thomas Gold shakes hands with Lee Adams. Well done to him. He does the business in the final race, 89.4 the winning time, and being congratulated by his teammates. And well, it's going to be the bumps for him. And well, that's great scenes here at Ipswich. And well, that in fact completes, completes Ipswich's home matches in the Elite League, they still got three away from home at Hull at Paul and at Oxford as Kevin Don gets the Witches fans to do the, cheer, do the cheerleading and Thomas 
Well, it looks like he's going to go round on another lap on, and he's absolutely delighted. Ipswich, well, they've still got hopes of winning this Elite League title then as the Dark Warrior comes round on a thoroughly well-deserved lap of honour. Cometh the hour, cometh the man, and he certainly did the business in heats number 13 and 15. Ipswich then victorious by a couple of points here this evening. Kings in, will they get something out of the match? Of course, takes two sides to make a good contest, and this certainly was that as Thomas continues with his acrobatics down the home straight. Kings in, will they collect the bonus point? And well, what's he going to do this time? And well, the crowd, they really have been treated to an excellent local derby this evening. Thomas, well, he finishes with a 13-point tally. And well, he's making his way back to the pits now. And as he does so, we'll take a look at all this evening's scores. As Thomas receives some more applause. And we do start with the Valiant Knights and Tony Ricardson with well, those two defeats in each 13 and 15 by Thomas Golub. Meant he scored 13 points from his five rides with an excellent performance and returned to his former track by him. Stefan Anderson, well he scored seven points including a race win and two second places. Bobrahel, eight and two bonus from his five rides, a good performance by him but he could have scored one or two more. Lee Adams, he scored ten and two bonus from his five rides, a couple of race victories. Travis McGowan, he scored two and one from his five rides. And uh, Tom Madsen, well he did well, he scored four points from his six outings, a couple of second places for him. Over to the victorious switches, Chris Louie, well not a good night for Chris, he only scored six points, but of course he touched the tapes in his fourth ride, and that put paid to any chances, he had a scoring points in that one, he had a win, a second and a third in his other outings. Savalas cleared an important race win in heat number eight, Five and one was his tally to a better performance by him. Tony Swarby had an important race win in heat number 12. He finished with eight and one bonus, got an out in the top scorer's race. Thomas Lepinka, seven and two bonus. It must have been close for, between him and Tony for the ride in that nominated heat, but a good performance by Thomas in his, against his former track. Thomas Golub, well, the hero in the final couple of races, three races, 13 points. Two defeats by Lee Adams when he had mechanical problems and by Tony Ricardson. Brett Woodyfield, six points, a good performance by the reserve. And finally, Gary Corbett, well, he chipped in with one and one bonus point. And well, without those, of course, it would have been a draw, but it was not. Ipswich scraped home by a couple of points. And so here come both teams. In fact, they're coming out on the victory parade vehicle. Ipswich winners by 46 points to 44. Kings in collect the bonus point for the two points for Ipswich moving further ahead in the Elite League table. Seven points now, Bellevue of course where they ride tomorrow and they've got another meeting at Coventry on Saturday. And so that lead will probably will be cut down somewhat by it, but Ipswich they complete, complete their home league matches. And of course they've had eight wins and that one loss against Coventry. How important will that be in the final analysis? Those three away matches still to come at Hull, Pool and Oxford. Still everything to race for. Both teams on the victory play vehicle and no wonder we have seen a cracking local derby here this evening. Supporters from both sides staying behind to cheer the riders. They've given all effort here this evening but it is Ipswich who are victorious by a couple of points. Just after the meeting we had a few words with the last heat hero. I got me Thomas Golub and Magda Louis first. Magda, you must be pleased. Well, I am very much so because I didn't think for a moment the match was going to be as hard as it was. Uh, we all, you know, fought very hard all the way, and, and it's, which is good for, pub, for public. It's not good for us to have a last heat decider. And I have asked, I said to him before the last race, if you win this one, I will never ask you for anything ever again this season. And he said, you've asked me that two weeks ago. So, uh, but I'm, I'm extremely pleased. The Kings in there are a good side home and in Ipswich, it seems at the moment, but they're always very welcome, Tony Ricardson and, and, and the rest of them, and I'm very happy, I'm chuffed to bits. And on to Thomas now, Thomas, he must be absolutely thrilled with two wins over Tony Ricardson. Do you have two wins over Ricardson? No, 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 I wanted to win those wins in Bydgoszczy during the edition, but I think that I'm going to work on them and I'll give them a chance. 
Well, I wish those two wins would be converted to two Bitgosh wins, but I'm going to work very hard not to give up my uh, position. Thomas has always said that he judges his riding by how good Tony's going. Is that still the same? Zawsze mierzysz swoje, swoją formę na Ricardsonie, czyli Tak, jest to, jest to na pewno najlepszy zawodnik świata i jeżeli z nim się wygrywa, znaczy, że jest i forma, i start, i wszystko, to to powinno być. Bo well, he is the best, well, one of the best, if not the best, the rider of the world, and if you can win over him, that means you start out good, and you're riding a good line, and obviously it's a nice feeling. And of course, Scott Bitgosz next week, very important Grand Prix, how's he feeling? Najważniejszy mecz życia w Bydgoszczy za tydzień. Jak się czujesz przed nim? No jestem bardzo, e, to troszkę zmęczony, ale popracuję na tym, żeby wyciszyć się i naładować na, właśnie na te zawody. Well, I am a bit tired at the moment, you know, all this sort of long season is catching up with me, but I will put no less than 100% to win at Bydgoszcz, because I know how vital it is for myself. I was going to say, good meeting at Bydgoszcz, and one hand is on the World Championship trophy. Jak wygrasz Bydgoszczy, to jedną rękę, już będzie, jedną rękę już będziesz miał na tabeł. Jeszcze muszę wygrać, ale są, będą to ciężkie zawody i mam nadzieję, że godnie powalczę. Well, I have to win it first, to, to, to lie this hand on a trophy, but it's going to be very, very hard. Perhaps people don't appreciate how hard it's going to be, uh, but I'm going, to, I'm going to fight all the way. And finally, last heat decider, last heat win over Kings Lynn. That's just what Ipswich public wanted, wasn't it? Ostatni bieg, uszczęśliwiłeś całe Ipswich. Coś tak było, to się bardzo cieszę. Po to tutaj jestem, żeby właśnie w trudnych sytuacjach wyciągać mecz i wygrywać dla Ciebie. Well, uh, I feel that I'm here to do the job in a crisis situation. I've been contracted, I've been told very specifically. I'm, 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 I'm you know, I'm, I'm leading, me and Chris, we're leading a team. And, uh, and, and, and I've just done it, what I've been uh, contracted for. Lovely, thanks very much, Magda. Thank you. Thanks, Thomas. So that's the end of an East Anglian derby. Ipswich have come out victors by two points in a cracking meeting. Thomas Gollop's victories over Tony Ricardson in heats 13 and 15 proved really decisive, as did Thomas De Pinkner's win in heat 14. That's what Speedway's all about. A home victory by two points over the local enemy.